I'm in a new composition now, and we're gonna look at a little bit more about an advanced example of using the wiggle expression, but really the techniques here are gonna apply to many use cases when you work with expressions, and that's gonna be when you have multiple layers being controlled by an expression, if you wanna be able to adjust them more easily together, you can use something called a slider. So we'll start off by on our box, just apply a wiggle expression. So we'll do Alt or Option click over here, wiggle, and we'll just say three comma 50, which again means that three times per second, you're gonna wiggle at an amplitude of 50 on the rotation over here. And I can just scrub through and I can see that it's moving. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my layer and do Control D or Command D to duplicate it and then just move that and do that a couple different times to fill my screen with blue boxes that all have the wiggle expression applied to them. And they're all using the same values because I just duplicated the original one. So every single layer has a wiggle at three comma 50. And I can hit play and I can see that my objects are now wiggling around on the screen and everything is all good. And everything is all good until I look at this and I think maybe they're all moving a little bit too quickly or they're wiggling a little bit too much or too little. So let's say that on this layer, I want to change it to five comma 500. And I'll hit play and I can see that that one is now moving in a different way than everything else. But maybe in this case, I think this is perfect. This is what I would like all of them to do. What I would need to do is I would need to select the expression here, copy, go over here and paste, go over here and paste, go over here and paste, and do this on every single layer in my composition because I've made an adjustment to the expression of one layer that I want to be applied to every single layer. Another way of doing it, of course, would be to delete all of the old layers, take the new one with the new correct expression, duplicate that again, and move it around if I'm just doing sort of a random layout of objects like this. And now they are gonna have that same expression of five comma 500. But again, at that point, if I go back and I hit play, I might look at that and say, uh oh, they're moving way too much. I now need to go back and make an adjustment again to be one comma something else like 80 on this layer. And now I can hit play and I can say, well, actually, maybe this layer is looking like the way I want them to move. I now have to do the whole copy and paste thing again, which is very annoying. The way to solve this is by using sliders instead. You can change the values of at any point during the making of the scene that you're working on. And what I like to do is I like to put those sliders on a separate layer. And to do that, I'm using a null. Many, many times when you're working with expressions or just controlling layers with other layers, nulls are a very good way of doing that because they're layers that don't show up in your final render. They're really just empty layers that allow you to control things in After Effects. So we'll create a new null. And I'll just name that control. And for the null, I'm gonna to go to effect and there's a little menu here called expression controls, which really have a bunch of very useful things that allow you to control expressions in an easier way, but they themselves don't do anything just like a null until you tell After Effects what they're supposed to do. So I'm gonna add a slider control and I have a slider control over here. I can just command D or control D to duplicate it. So now I have two slider controls on my control layer these are the sliders that I'm gonna to use to control the wiggling of my layers. So to do it like we did before, I'm gonna name the first one frequency because it's gonna control how many times per second is this thing wiggling. And the second one is gonna be called amplitude. So there's still slider controls, but I'm able to rename them on my layer just to make it make a little bit more sense when I'm working inside my project. Now I'm pretty much done at this point, but I wanna be able to link my layers to these two sliders. And to do that, I can just go up to the effects controls here and I can click the little lock icon to make sure that this window is not gonna be locked on screen. So if I select box 18, 
it's not going to show me the effect controls for box 18. It's still going to show me these two that I want to be looking at. And just like I mentioned before, what we're really doing is we're saying within the parentheses, we want to have two values, the frequency and the amplitude. In this case, I happen to have written one comma 80, but really it is saying frequency comma amplitude. That's what we want to put in here. Just because we've named them this way is not going to be enough for After Effects to understand that, okay, you want to link to this slider and that slider, but that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So instead of writing the word frequency manually, I'm going to clear out the parentheses. And for the very first thing where I would say frequency, I'm instead going to take the pick whip down here, expression pick whip. It looks very similar to the parenting pick whip but you want to use the one called expression pick whip down here where your uh, expression is. I'm just going to click on that and drag it up to my frequency slider and let go. And you'll see that it now adds a bunch of complicated text here, but really what it's doing is it's linking to that specific slider. So if we just try to read through this, it says this comp dot layer control so it's looking inside of this composition. It's looking for a layer called control, which is what we named it manually. On that layer, it's looking for an effect, which we did add. We did add a slider control effect. It's looking for an effect called frequency. Again, that is what we named it manually up here. And then for the frequency, it's looking for a slider, which we can see down here as well. So the way that this is written may look complicated at first, but if you just take a deep breath and have a look at it, it's fairly straightforward to actually understand what it's actually doing. It's just written in more of a programmer mindset than regular text. After all of this text, we can just go to the end before the final parentheses, closing everything off, we can write the word comma. And then we again take the expression pick whip, but this time we drag it to the amplitude slider and let go. And now it adds the exact same thing, but we've now looked at the amplitude effect instead of the frequency effect. And now we can just click away and you'll see that our little expression error disappears. But when I scroll through, you'll see that all of them are rotating except for the one that we just added our expression to. So our expression is correct, but nothing is moving. And that is because our sliders are currently set to zero and zero. So it is actually wiggling, but it's wiggling zero times per second at an amplitude of zero. If I want this to look the same as the rest, I want the frequency to be five and the amplitude to be 500. So let's just add five, on the frequency and 500 on the amplitude. And now this one, which has the expression applied linked to those two sliders, it's actually moving the same way as everybody else, but I'm now able to change the numbers to one comma 100. And now that's been updated to this layer. So really what we want to do is take this whole line of expression code, copy that and paste it instead of the previous one with the numbers predefined. So I can just copy and paste and copy and paste, or I can just select the word rotation, go to edit, copy expression only, and I can select all of my layers and I can say edit, paste. And now if I just open up the rotation, you'll see we have the exact same code as we do on the top layer where we did write things manually. Now they're all linked to these two sliders, which means that all of them are now rotating one time per second at an amplitude of 100, but I can change that to three and 400 instead and now they're all going to be wiggling that way instead. So this way of working doesn't really create a cooler final end result or anything. It's just about working smart in After Effects and linking things to sliders that you know that you want to be changing after the fact instead of defining the values on each layer manually, which then becomes a very annoying thing to go back and make changes to. <laughs> We're back in our forest scene and for the final part of this lesson, we're going to be looking at the things we just learned with expressions. How do we actually apply this to a real world scenario? And this real world scenario is going to be our forest. So number one, we'll have a look at 
if we want to add some movement to our trees, maybe they're wiggling around in the wind a little bit, maybe the wiggle expression might be a clever technique to use to actually do that. I could go to my trees here and apply the wiggle expression to the rotation. So it's wiggling around like this. And then I can just apply that to every single layer in my composition, use sliders that we just did to link all of them together and control them that way. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to have a look at our scene and see that we're using the tree composition in all of the use cases across this entire composition. So I could actually add a wiggling thing inside of my composition instead, and that will automatically add it to all of my layers in the whole composition. So I'm going to go for that technique instead, and I'm not actually going to be wiggling the rotation. I'm going to be wiggling a bend effect on top of it. We're inside of our tree composition. And again, instead of just wiggling the stem layer like this, I'm going to add a new adjustment layer at the very top, which is going to be affecting all of the layers below it. So I'm going to add on that one an effect distort CC bend it. So at this point, we've done a couple different lessons on introduction to After Effects. We've looked at shape layers, we looked at effects, we're now looking at expressions. We're starting to combine all of these different techniques where what I'm looking to do is give a tree a little bit of movement as if the wind is affecting it. I can start to think about from all I've learned so far, what technique do I want to use to make this work in the best way possible? And in this case, I want to apply an effect that gives a little bit more of an organic bending motion to the tree instead of just rotating the tree. With the bend effect, it is cutting my tree off a little bit, but I can just move the end point to the top of the screen and my starting point to the bottom of the screen like this. And here I have a bend value that I can just adjust like this. And you'll see what it does on screen. And instead of setting keyframes, I'm going to alt click on the word bend. So this is an effect before we looked at adding an expression to our rotation transform property, but every single value in After Effects or every single property in After Effects that has a stopwatch that means it can be keyframed also means that we can apply an expression to it. I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch for the word bend, and that's going to pop that thing directly open in our timeline. And here I'm just going to say wiggle, one comma 10. And because I'm doing this inside of my tree composition, I'm only doing this once on the tree and I don't really need to link this to two specified sliders because this is just going to be a one time value. I might as well just go in and change the numbers here, but I can scrub through and I can see now it's wiggling like this. And if you remember back in the lesson where we actually created the scene, one of the tips that I gave you was to make sure that for every asset that you're creating, make sure the length of your composition is going to be longer than the length of your scene. In this case, our scene is 10 seconds long, but our tree composition is 30 seconds long. So I generally make every asset two or even three times the length of my scene. The reason why I'm doing that is going to become very clear at this point. So I've added my wiggle expression, which means that this tree is now wiggling throughout my entire composition, one time per second at an amplitude of 10. I go back to my scene forest. You will now see that all of my trees are wiggling, but they're all also 100% in sync because all of my tree composition are starting at zero and my composition is 10 seconds long, but I can see that my tree layers are actually extended further than the length of my composition, which means that I can just take my layers and just randomly move them around like this to make their endpoints start earlier than the composition itself so that they are all using different parts of their entire 30 second length and I'm specifying which part is actually being shown in the 10 seconds that I have available in my scene. So I'm just randomly moving them around. And now when I scrub through, you'll see all of my trees are wiggling, but they're not 100% in sync. And this makes it look more natural, like the wind is affecting the trees in different ways. 
To make this scene look a little bit nicer, I'm just gonna add a quick background. I'm gonna do a new solid, put that at the very bottom. And it happened to be in a random blue color, but I'm gonna add an effect, generate gradient ramp. And I do want to have a blue color. And at the bottom, I want it to be white, just so we have a little bit of a fall off between them. And I have a start and an end point that I can just move around on my gradient to have a little bit of a sky with some. So we've used the wiggle expression on a bend effect of our trees. Let's use the time expression in action in our scene right here. And to do that, I'm going to add a sun in the background. So I'm going to create a new composition, 3000 by 3000. It's going to be 30 seconds long. I'm just going to name that sun. And in here, I'll use the rounded rectangle tool, double click it. I'll speed through this part a little bit since we've covered this kind of workflow in past lessons just using the basic workflow using shape layers to create a circle like this, just call that sun. Now, if I'm rotating the sun, I don't really see a difference because it's 100% circular. So if a circle rotates like this and it's just a solid color, I'm not gonna be seeing a difference at all. So what I wanna do is I wanna add some rays to the sun and I'll do that by using my pen tool and in here, I wanna be a little bit careful and see that I have my center point here and I wanna add my rays outside of the sun, but I'll try to be sort of vertically in line with my center point. I'll put one point here and then I'll put one point a little bit higher up like this. And I wanna have a stroke, the same color as the sun, but no fill like this. Just adjust that a little bit. So now I have a sun ray let's name that ray open that up go to the contents and just make it look nicer we will change butt cap to round cap so we have rounded corners like so and for my shape i'll go over to the add menu that we've used many times before when we're designing the shape layer and i'll use a repeater open that up and i can say three copies that's fine for now position is going to default to 100 on the x but i'll set that to zero and instead, what I want to do is I want to rotate them around my object like this. But three rays are probably way too little. We'll turn that up to 10 and we'll rotate that around a little bit. But it can be hard to get this to actually look nice. So this is going to be a bonus example of when you would want to use expressions to make your life easier. We know that a full rotation is 360 degrees. So if I want to place my rays on an even basis around my full rotation of the sun in a circular pattern, I would want to divide them evenly. So if I want to have a full rotation, which is 360 degrees, and I want to have 10 copies, if I put the rotation to be at 36 degrees, they're going to be divided evenly. So this one starts at zero, then it goes to 36 degrees, then another 36, another 36, and so on until it's duplicated them 10 times around the sun like this. But if I change the number to seven, my 36 degrees are no longer going to make sense because now I need to do one full rotation divided by seven to come up with what that number is going to be. And I could go off and do that in a calculator and then write the number in here. But again, this is where expressions are so handy to make your life a little bit easier. So instead of defining the value over here, I'm just going to take out that completely and I'm going to alt click on rotation and I'm going to say 360 which is one full rotation divided by, and I'm not gonna write the number seven manually. I'm gonna use the expression pick whip and drag it to my copies and just let go. It's now gonna take 360 divided by seven because the number is seven, or if I change it to 10, it's gonna take 360 divided by 10. And this thing is gonna keep updating to always take 360 divided by my number of copies. I'm back in my forest. I'm gonna take my sun, I'm gonna drag it in here, put it at the bottom, but above the sky, make it a 3D layer. 
And just to check, my ground plane 3, which is at the very back, has a C position of 1400, so I want my sun to be further back than 1400. So I'll set that to 2000. And we'll just scale that down quite a bit. Move that up, put that over here somewhere. Scale it down again. Something like this, like so. And now my sun is gonna be way back in the background. And from here, now that I have a little bit of detail around it, instead of just a circle, if I now rotate my sun manually first like this, you'll see that, okay, now we're actually seeing that this thing is rotating. And that could be a subtle way of adding a little bit of movement to a design like this. So of course, I'm not gonna be putting any keyframes and rotating it manually. I'm gonna alt click on Z rotation and say time multiplied by let's say 30 and then I'll just drag through here and see solo the layer to just look at that on its own uh, maybe a little bit too slow we'll go time multiplied by 50 and now it's rotating like this and now I have a sun layer way back in the background that is also having a bit of a subtle rotation throughout the entire scene and even if I extend my scene to be longer than 10 seconds this expression is still going to work. I don't need to adjust any keyframes or anything. Everything's just going to be all good. Finally, I'm going to take my spaceship. I'm going to drag him in, put him at the very top, turn him to a 3D layer, and we'll scale that down. And the beam is being cut off a little bit, but we'll just not worry about that for now. Just put him in here like he's up in the sky somewhere. And I want to be able to move him around like this, but maybe I want him to sort of slowly bounce up and down like this. What I like to do for those types of things is that I don't want to add any expression to the positioning because I want to be able to adjust where he is in 3D space. But I also have my anchor point, which is where the anchor point is positioned, but by changing the numbers like this, you can actually sort of fake an up and down movement like this with the anchor point instead. So just soloed my spaceship, and because we have a camera movement in the beginning, I'll just go to three seconds for now and set a keyframe. We're gonna move to four seconds. I'm gonna move up ever so slightly to, let's say 1600. I'm gonna go back to five seconds, one second forward, copy that keyframe select them all and apply an easy ease because I want this to be a fairly soft and subtle motion like this. So now it's just bouncing up and down a little bit to give it a little bit more life. And from here, we'll add the loop out expression. And by default, it's gonna use the cycle and because I have three keyframes with the first and the last keyframe being the exact same, my cycling is gonna be fine. So I can just click away that's all that I need to do. And now from five seconds and forward, it's gonna keep that up and down movement a little bit. Now I just set the keyframes here in three seconds because of my camera movement. But now that I've seen it, I know that it looks good. I can just drag these back to the very beginning of the timeline, which means that I now have my keyframes from one to, from zero to two seconds. And then from two seconds, gonna be looping that same animation throughout the entire thing. And now we have our spaceship in our 3D scene like this. That means that I can still scale it up. I can still move him around. So maybe I want him to be positioned like this, but all of that up and down movement that's on my anchor point instead of on my position is still gonna be applied regardless of where he is on screen. That's still happening. And now we've been able to combine the wiggle expression, the loop expression, and the time expression, and put that into our 3D scene, and combined our spaceship guy with our forest scene. We got expressions down. Not just the winky face and the smiley face, we actually got into the JavaScript technical mumbo jumbo, and we were able to animate things using code. Pretty sweet, right? So we're nearing the end, we have one lesson left. That one is going to be bringing everything together into what we're calling compositing. So if you want to figure out what that is, 
click the link to go to the next one, or just click like on this one, click subscribe, stick around, and watch all of the other tutorials Perfect. in the series, watch all of the other stuff on the channel. Enjoy.